Hello everyone. Um, my name is Lisa Kester. I'm with Wild Acorns Pottery. I hope all you guys are doing well. Um, I know it's been a while since I've made a video. There's been, you know, a lot of stuff. I don't know, a lot of stuff going on, you know. You know how life gets in the way. But anyway, somebody had, um, Hope I hopefully I remember how to do a video, right? It's been forever. Um, I still been doing pottery, but I've been doing it at uh, the recreation center where I work. But anyway, somebody asked me uh, to show them how I make these little these birds. I usually do them. Usually paint them um, blue, like blue blue birds, so you can kind of see what. It's kind of what um I think I made his feet too big <laughs> but you know he's supposed to be kind of funky kind of fun you know we're not trying I'm not trying to make him look like a certain kind of bird you know but anyway but that's that's him so that's what I am working on today I really should be working on pumpkins <laughs> it's August and uh, I have a show coming up in a few weeks which will be the first Saturday in September. Um, so, I don't know. I think they'll be looking for pumpkins then. I know then the next show that I'm in is in October, and that is called the Weber's Family, the Weber's Farm Family Pumpkin Festival. It's a long, it's a long name. <laughs> that is the second week in October, I believe. Um, but that's at Weber's Farm here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, that's that's a two-day event. That's really a, a huge, huge festival. So, so I need to make a lot of pumpkins for that. So I may do a pumpkin video. I know I think I can't remember if I did one. Uh, the state with the with the pumpkins stand up the window pumpkins. Um, I don't know. So I'll probably do another one of those. But anyway, let me lower you down here so you can see what I'm doing. These um, these little birdies they're really easy to make. I'll, Let's see. Let me set him over here like this. Hope you can kind of see him. The lighting in my family room here. This well, this is part of my house. It is not very bright, and um, so I really struggle with the light, especially when I'm painting at night. Um, but anyway, so these these are pinch pot birds. Um, let me get my wire cutter here. Let me cut this down a little bit. Now, <clears throat> some people um, start out a pinch pot with a round ball, and then they just, like that, and then they put their thumbs in it and pinch it all out. I don't do it that way, and I, I don't show you why. I don't know, just the way I, I do it, I think. Because this way, you end up with two sides that automatically pretty much line up when you're making two cups to put together. So when I'm looking at this ball, um, I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. So I want the ball to be a little bit smaller than the bird I want. So I'm going to cut a little more off of here. It's still a little big. If, for those of you who have been watching me, um, <clears throat> I um, you know I don't measure a lot, and I don't I don't like things to look exactly all the same. I'm not I'm not a production potter, far from it, and um, so I like the individuality of the things I make. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that are very similar, obviously, and. But for the most part, um, I, I really don't worry about trying to make things exactly the same. So rubbing it like that on the table really does take out some of the wrinkles and the imperfections. And then I'm going to cut it, try to cut it pretty much right in half. And if you're not perfect, it really isn't that big a deal. Because you're going to put them back together anyway. One side's a little bit bigger than another. but So now I'm taking my 
thumbs like that. I'm going to try to do it with one thumb because this one is hurting today. Um, my, arthritis, <clears throat> my arthritis is getting a little worse. That's part of why I don't do as much pottery as I used to. Um, I don't know. Eventually, I may have to have, may just go ahead and do surgery and see if that helps it. But my doctor has me on a new medicine now, which is not working very well. So let's see. So you don't want these walls to too thin because you're going to be poking and prodding this thing and <laughs> and it just makes it more difficult so kind of kind of you know drop it on the table like that that just kind of flattens out that edge and makes a nice edge to connect to the other side so here we go with this side same thing I'm just pinching it between my fingers If you've got a classroom full of kids, this is a great, a great project too. Because you know they're all going to turn out um, pretty wonky. Um, at the recreation center, I teach um, mainly four, some four and five year olds. Um, well, mainly adults, but I do have a, a couple classes here and there of four and five year olds, and um, it's just so much fun to see how you give them a project and they all turn out so differently. And really, they just, you know, they just want the feel of the clay. They just, they just want to play. <laughs> I don't think they really care what they make. So anyway, so let's, um, I just bent that side in there. But we can fix it. There we go. Okay. This clay is really, really soft. It was hard when I checked on it a few months ago. So I added some water to it. And now it's nice and soft. I should be. It would be so nice to throw with clay like this. So I may throw some pumpkins on the wheel, do a video of that too. So now I'm just taking my tool to scratch it, scratch and score. Now I scratch and score, um, I guess it's a score and slip, scratch and score, I don't know. I just scratch it up right on the piece. I don't need any slip because what I'm doing is you can see I'm dipping this in water so as I'm putting the water on here and scratching it I'm creating slip now if these two pieces were really dry you know how you um, you know if you're building a building or something out of slab that you've dried out see the slip on that there's quite a bit now so I didn't even need to mess with slip Sometimes I'll keep a little slip, a little cup with slip in it. But, um, <clears throat> you know, if you're not doing it every day and then it dries out and, and you're constantly trying to make more slip. And, and then if you don't use it too and it's wet, then it gets moldy and it stinks, which it's still good, but I'm allergic to mold, so I really don't want to breathe in mold. Okay, so I've got that pretty well you can see how really wet that is. It's really sc scratched up. And, and so now I'm going to put these two together. Now you can see that one is stretched out a little further than the other, which is perfectly fine. So we're going to take, we take my finger and we're just going to go around like that all the way around. You can also take a rib kind of think your finger works better but because your finger will drag some of the clay over top of the other one and then I'm going to kind of bat it into place here so now that I've got this together I am going to create a little we'll call them a little snake You don't have to do this, but I do it because trying to get that seam 
to become invisible. It really um, stay together. It's harder than you think. And you can take your finger and kind of brush the edge over of each one. But this clay is so soft. Um, I don't think that'll work. So, okay, so I'm going to take that. A little baby rolling pin here. This is so nice. I use this for so much. Um, if I have stamps or transfers, and just just smooth that out. I'm gonna scratch and score this a little bit. Now, let's see here. So I'm just going to wrap this around here, right over the seam. And now I'm going to take my fingers. I oh, know I'm making a mess here. Um, but it'll be fine. There you go. I'm just working that in on that side. Working it in on this side. These little bluebirds, um, they're so much fun. I always sell them whenever whenever I do a show. This clay is so soft. Oh my gosh. It's not really cooperating very well, but it'll be fine. So I'm going to roll it a little bit here. You won't believe how nice and smooth this gets. You can also take a wooden spoon. I think I've got one here somewhere. Yeah. This one's got some brown clay on it, but I think, yeah, you, so you can also take a wooden spoon and if you have any frustrations, you can take your frustrations out on this little birdie here. <laughs> oh, it's not a little birdie yet, is it? So you don't have to feel too bad. But yeah, it also works, like I said, just to, just to roll it around. And you shouldn't be able to see that seam anymore. That is the goal. So I'm going to take a sponge. I'm going to wring it out really well. And just kind of feather that in a little bit more. You want to take your time getting this ball together. Because you don't want to crack and open in a kiln. So yeah, so yesterday I was in here, my little studio, and I was cleaning and trying to get things kind of organized. I can't, I, it's hard for me to work if I look up and, and it is pretty, <laughs> it's still kind of messy, but it's hard for me to work when it's in such disarray. I like things to be organized, I really do. I'm not very good at it, but I, but I like it to be organized. Okay, so that's good enough for now. So now the air is locked in here. It's, it's you know, so which allows you to mess with it a little bit without it coming apart. So now the next step is to form the body. And this is simple. We're just going like this. Look at that. There you go. And that's really all you need to do. Smooth it out a little bit because there you go. There, and that's all you really need to do. Do you see the shape there? So it's flat on the bottom. And then this is gonna be the front and this will be the back, and it really doesn't matter. Um, I can see that the, it's a little taller here in the front, so that's why I'm going to pick this to be the face. 
So, all right now. And you can make this top as sharp as you want or as flat as you want. You don't have to have it um, the top as pronounced. It just depends on what kind of bird you want to make. Okay, so see, there we go. Now we are going to make eight little balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that'll be as, maybe be his beak, but we'll look at that later. Okay, so take the eight little balls you just made, kind of roll them into balls. Two are going to be your eyeballs, your little birdie's eyeballs, and the other six are going to be his feet. On the one I made before, I think his feet are a little big, but but they're supposed to be, you know, kind of funky little feet, so it really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's take, let's pick out the two smallest ones. We'll set them aside. These are going to be his eyeballs. And then we're going to take these, and we're just going to, with your, your finger in the back, and these two fingers in the front, you're going to press down. And see, you end up with like a claw. See how that looks? And he's got a little bit of a flat spot in the back. And the flat spot, okay, see here? It's going to go right up against here like this. So, so let's do these other ones here. We're going to squeeze the front and the back at the same time. And then I keep the little ones because I put those, these usually aren't all the same size. So I put the big ones around the back and I put the little claws in the front. So here's a big one. Here's kind of a medium sized one and then a small one. So I'm going to take these three like that. And I'm just going to kind of squish them together. See that? So I'm going to take these other ones. And I'm just lining them up in a row. And then I'm just kind of kind of squishing them like that. See that? Just kind of squishing like that. And then I'm going to bring the back over like that. So now I'm going to take my little scratcher here. You can also use one of these. This is what I usually use. This is one of these serrated ribs. They're nice too. And then just kind of score this here. And I'm going to dip this in the water and just um, create a little bit of slip there. And I'm going to put some score over here. And then I'm going to take the backs of my little toes. And I'm going to score those with a little bit of water added to it. Now, I'm going to take these and I'm going to fit them. Actually, I'm going to get a piece of cardboard to set this on so they don't stick to my table. I usually don't, but like I said, this um, this clay is really it's really wet. Now I'm going to take this down here. I'm going to lift up the body a little bit and then set it down. And then same thing over here. We'll lift it up a little bit and set it down. Because I want the feet to be under the body, not sitting like right out front. Let me 
need to turn this around. Oops, I got it that's in the wrong spot. There we go. Okay. This clay is like mush. <laughs> it doesn't want to... It's just so... Soft. There we go. And then I've got a wet paintbrush here that I just dipped in some water. And I'm just going to kind of clean this up, kind of go over, um, smooth out some of the scratch marks I made that I didn't cover. go. Alrighty. Now I'm going to gently pick it up and I'm going to take a turn it over and you can see the back. See how that looks? So I'm just going to take my fingers and just smooth that right into the bottom side of the bird. I have to show you guys my uh, pottery trailer. So I decided not to sell the pottery trailer. That was a huge debate for me back months ago. And I was really, I just couldn't decide what to do. Um, but in the end, I was gonna get a school bus and people talked me out of it because of the maintenance and stuff. But um, so there, see how that looks now? I may, I, I don't know. So one of these days I may get a, like a food truck type truck and set it up as a, because it would be so much easier for me going to shows and stuff and not having to unpack and uh, unpack and pack a car every single time. So I want to continue to do pottery, but I got to make it a little bit easier for me. And the trailer became, um, so oh, it's 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 an older horse trailer, so it became a little bit too much for me to handle, especially the backing in. Um, you know, I've got my son with me when I go to shows, but um, I don't you know I don't I don't trust him a hundred percent to back in between other people's tents and whatnot. So, but I've got it outside, I've got it all set up, and I'll have to do a video and show you guys how I got it all, have it all set up. It looks really cute. I, I um, yeah, it's, it's set up about 90%. I didn't set it up 100% because, like I said, I do have an art show in a few weeks. So I'm going to have to unload it all and pack it in my car, and but I probably won't take all of it because I, I have Christmas stuff in there from last year. I got these beautiful Christmas trees I did. I just love them. Um, I'll do, I, yeah, I'm going to have to do a video on that because you guys will love these Christmas trees. Okay. Now, now we're going to do the beak. So, I've got myself a little wad of clay about this, uh, the side a little bit smaller than a ping pong ball and I'm gonna kind of flatten it down and I'm gonna mold it so the way I make my beaks is I like them to be straight it's just like a little funky little thing I like to do you don't have to do that you can do cone ones like the shape of a carrot or let's see how mine are like that so that's kind of my little little thing I, I like I think you know kind of I can't remember if angry birds is that way or not I can't remember where I saw them at <laughs> but I really I don't know I like that and, and I 
draw some of them that way too. I'm sure you've probably seen them. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the angle here. And I'm gonna kinda tap this piece on the table and kinda mold it how I want it. So like, okay, so that's how I'm starting out. See that? I'm just starting out like a triangle. But, so if I lay it up here like this, okay, I'm gonna look at it and, I, and obviously I'm gonna have to carve out, make it more concave. And you can just mold it with your fingers too, but just kind of keep <clears throat> putting it up here and seeing how it works best. As, as once I get it um, kind of looking how I want it. So I can see that his beak is going to be too big. I don't want a huge, huge beak. So I cut a little off. Put it back up there. So now I'm looking. So see how that's looking there? I'm getting close. I'm getting close to what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and attach it. Put it on here. And I'm going to actually add. A little dollop of clay just right there to try to make that transition even a little flatter up there. <clears throat> and I think what I'm going to do is make a couple little little worms here. This is what I call my little, whoops, my little worms. I'm just going to work them in there. And put one on the other side. It just helps uh, stabilize his beak a little bit more. And you can just roll them in your hand too. And just pull off the excess that you don't need. And then with my thumb, just going to kind of work that in there. Hope everybody's summers went well. I can't really complain. I just hate it. I hate that it's going by so fast. That's <laughs> that's the only thing to complain about. I love I love the warm weather. I'm not a not a huge fan of the winter. There we go. Let's smooth that in. And so once you get this on here, you can still manipulate it and, uh, you know, shape it, shape it how you want to. This little birdie's getting quite the massage. People see a little bird and they think, hmm, you know, I don't think a lot of people who don't do pottery, I don't think they realize the amount of work that goes in just for one little bird. Okay. So there we go. Got that sh that shape there. 
Okay, let's smooth down this other side a little bit. go. I think that looks pretty good. So now we're taking our remaining two balls that we made and I either take the end of a toothbrush or something, you know, something that has a kind of a fat end like this marker. I dip it in water and then I'm just going to press down inside his eye. And cornstarch corn works great too. You don't have to use the the water. The cornstarch isn't quite as um, messy, really. And I'm kind of smoothing that down a little bit, so it's not quite so rough. See how that looks there? And so I'm just dipping my finger in the water and just kind of. Smoothing it down. Then I'm going to score the back. Just you don't want his eyeballs to fall off in the kiln. I've had that happen too. <laughs> and it's not easy to reattach them on a vertical surface. So now we're going to score this. And kind of decide where you want your eyeballs because where you place them really changes the look of the bird. Get a little scratch and score. I would say scratch and score. Usually it's scratch and slip, but since I'm not slipping, it's like <laughs> I'm, I'm making up my own verbiage here. So now I'm going to put these little eyeballs on. And I'm going to kind of rock them back and forth to get them really worked in there good. I'm going to take my, my wet paint brush and just kind of smooth down the lines around it. Hello little birdie. He's, yeah, he's looking good now. He's got eyeballs. There we go. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to take this little tool here. This is, I bought a whole set of these. I don't really remember where, but it was probably at Queen City Clay here in Cincinnati. But these things are great. You just, I'm just going to poke a little nose hole in there because, you know, he has to be able to breathe. There we go. Now, let's give this little little birdie some wings. We'll take some more. Move him out of the way a little bit. I'm going to take a couple bowls of clay here. Try to <coughs> thin this out a little bit. It's, usually, I don't have too much problems with my clay sticking to the table, but like I said, this is pretty wet clay. Although my table, my table is birch wood, and um, when you get it, you should rub tongue oil into it. And um, I need to do or linseed, hmm. linseed oil. No, I can't remember. I don't think it would really matter which one, 
<clears throat> but anyway, it helps it from sticking, but usually I don't have a problem with it sticking too much. Okay, so you don't want these to be too thick because you don't want these big thick wings sticking on there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut out triangles. Circles and triangles, that's all this bird really is. So let's lay these on top of each other like that. I don't know where my needle tool went. I, I, I buy so many needle tools and I, I can never find them. Oh, here, you know what? I think I see it. I think I see an old one over here. Here we go. There we go. Another needle tool. So I'm going to cut a flat side over here. And then I'm going to cut, that's probably too big. So just take them, you know, just peel them back apart. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully it'll peel apart since this is so wet. And I'm going to lay it up on the bird. And it's, you know, I think that's too big. So I'm going to put them back together. And I'm going to make them smaller. Now let's see. Mm, yeah, I think that I think it's a little big. I'm gonna cut a little bit off the bottom. There we go. <clears throat> see, there you go. <clears throat> so that's what it ends up looking like. Just a triangle with the back with the back cut off. So now I'm going to score the back. There we go, and I'm going to score the bird. Just keep dipping this in water, and ah, I hit his little eyeball. Just kind of score that a little bit. Now I'm going to put his little wings on here. Like that. I'm going to get my sponge out and kind of dampen a little bit. I'm going to smooth the edges of his wings down. I'm going to blend them in a little bit, not all the way. Whoops, that one fell off. That's not good. It's not good, Lisa. There we go. There we go. We'll make sure these are on there good. And I'm going to put a wing feather texture I guess on here whatever let me get my where's my paintbrush here's my paintbrush there we go I'm just gonna smooth around the edges here I keep, I keep, keep bumping his toes I could have put them on last Whatever you put on there, you're going to bump, so that's all good. Okay, now, so that's how it looks now. So I'm going to take this tool again. Any tool will work that, um, you know, has a, I don't like one that has a sharp edge, like a needle tool. This one's kind of a dull edge, but it, eh, where, there we go. But you can kind of see that. And it's just, this tool is good for so many things when you're hand building. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to start at the end here, at the end of the wing. So let me wet it. 
got to wet it. There we go. There you go. See that? Now there's going to be some, there's some, I call them clay boogers. It's got some clay boogers on it, but I am not going to worry about those until the, this is dry. Because I don't want, I don't want the clay boogers to be, to go back down in there. It's so much easier if the clay's dry. So, okay, so that's him so far, but he's missing a tail. So we can do his tail. So, let me show you this tail that I was looking at before. So, um, I can't, I always can't decide. I don't know, so you, when you guys make these, if you want to put the tail on this way, you know, like a, like you know how birds really sometimes it sticks up. This one's probably a little bit too small now, but um, so then he looks like that, which is very cute. Kind of almost like a fishy tail, um, you know. So I, but I I just I don't know why I want it this way, but I can see a lot of people wanting to put it that way, which is perfectly fine. Whatever, however you want it is fine. So, but when I'm thinking about the, the, the wing on the back, I'm thinking also that I like it straight. So see how that line runs straight across? You don't have to do that. You can put them up, straight up, however you want to do it. But I, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the curvature of the back end of him and then I'm gonna kind of look at that and I'm gonna eyeball it cut it out there we go. let's see here I think I've got this way too big. Let's see. Well, hello, Miss Molly. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna bend this or shape this a little bit. I want to get it in the shape that I want first, and then I'll cut the. So okay, so that's what it ended up being. It's gonna it's gonna be of that shape. So this is gonna go up to the back of the bird. See like that. That's how that starts out like that. And then the same thing with how I had the nose. I'm going to add a little fill in there. I'm going to score this. Dip this in water. Score the back a little bit. Then I'm going to put that on there. Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, clay filler here. Just right there. I'm gonna add a cup, make a couple little um, wormies. Get them along there. There we go. Kind of put this up here so. Give this tail some stability, and then I'm going to blend those in. Surprise, Millie's not over here, the kitty cat. Um, if you've seen some of my videos, <laughs> she's she's over here uh, nosing. They're usually, when I was here yesterday, trying to clean up and get things a little more organized. Oh my gosh, her and Molly, the two sisters, were... They were in the water, and trying to get my sponges out. And I had, they were splashing the water out of the bucket. It was pretty funny. They have been, they have been uh, 
really just the best best cats. They uh, they're like therapy. Um, they're very loving and they seem to know when you need them. I don't know. Like they like to sit on my lap sometimes and sleep while I'm watching TV. Although they do like to bug me when I go to bed at night too. Especially in the morning when they want their food and they want me up. They'll sit there and they'll stare at me while I'm sleeping. <laughs> I try not to open my eyeballs though because if they see I'm awake then they really won't let me go. Won't let me alone. But they are, they are sweeties. They've gotten so big. Some of these, um, some of the videos you'll see them in, they, uh, they were just kittens when we got them. We got them at the, the SPCA where they were, I guess they were feral. Their mother was feral and then she had the kittens and so we took a couple of them and Millie's a little bit more skittish than Molly. Molly, she just, she's a trip. She's probably in there sleeping on my son's lap while he's playing video games. <laughs> Millie's a little bit more on the skittish side, so we have been working more and more with her, trying to get her to uh, be more friendly. She's very friendly with me, and but she still doesn't like to be picked up too much. Um, okay, so let me clean this up just a little, just a little bit more. Let me get my wet paintbrush out here. This thing is. I've got such fat fingers that these paintbrushes are so nice. I just can't get into these little tiny spots. Okay. Okay, so that's how that looks now. So now I'm going to cut the angles in. So that's how I ended up with this one. And like I said, you can do this so many ways. Um, I'm going to thin out the back here a little bit. And then I'm going to cut in here. Like that. And I'm just going to stretch them apart a little bit like that. And I'm just going to smooth the edges down. You would do the same thing if this was a fish. Um, you, if you've seen my fish, I make them the same way, uh, except, uh, you know, a different mouth. <laughs> but instead of the wings, I have flippers or fins. Fins, I should say, right? <clears throat> but the, um, the fish I do, the little fish, are pinch pots also. You can make so much with a pinch pot. I mean, little, little critters, animals, you know, anything. Um, okay, so I'm, I, I like the shape of that. It goes up a little bit in the back, but um, I'm going to add a little bit of a clay, clay wad. <clears throat> a little bit of a wormy right in there. Try to fill that in a little more. I forgot to watch my time. Hopefully I'm not taking too long. I'm using um, B-Mix 5 with Grog. Um, I like it with the Grog because it holds its shape better, doesn't crack as easily as without the Grog. And we use, that's what we use at the at the rec center. I always order the with the grog. It's much friendlier. So, okay. So there's how it looks now. And I'm gonna put the indentations on there for the feathers. So again, I'm just gonna wet wet the end of this, and it's gonna start. This time I'm gonna start up here because I I want them to start in a certain place and just bring that out 
There you go. And then, like I said, when um, these dry, I will uh, clean more of the clay boogers off, but I pretty much just leave them go for now. And do the top a little bit, and there you go. There he is. Maybe soften that up a little bit there. There you go. So yeah, these are simple to make. They're fun to make, and um, it's good to, you know, learn how to make pinch pots because you can really just make anything with them. I mean, they're a great way to do that. And so now I know someone will let me peel that off of there. Um, I will put a hole in these. Um, when they harden up a little bit, I'll put a hole in the bottom. You don't have to. Um, it's a myth that they'll explode in a kiln because there's no hole. What causes them to explode in the kiln is if there's moisture inside and there's no hole. So if there's no hole and there's moisture, it's going to explode. So just out of safety's sakes, a lot of people put holes in them to you know allow them to dry out more and you know in case it's not a hundred percent dry it helps you know not uh not ex not, not let them explode in a kiln but anytime you've got moisture in clay it's pretty much going to explode in a kiln because that steam just uh, is like it creates pressure, you know, air pressure, and just kaboom. Let's see here. All right. I don't like the... I'm going to try and smooth out these little feet a little more. In my next video, I'll uh, probably do a pumpkin, because I'd like to make a couple pumpkins anyway. I do have a couple from last year still, but... There we go. All right. Look at these. Jan from up north knitted these socks. Is that just amazing? Oh, I can't. They're so pretty. I can't wear them. <laughs> I just love them. And uh, yeah, she got me something else too. But this is uh, Jan from up north, up in Canada. How sweet is that? She sent me some glaze, some pink glaze that I. I love, and I uh, have to figure out what I want to use that for. Um, but look at this sock she sent me. Thanks, Jan. This will come in handy in the winter, but I don't know if I can wear them. They're so pretty. Anyway, thank you so, so much. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll get back in the swing of things and start making some more videos and uh, get, get my act together, huh? Thank you so much. Have a great day.